Jis Mora Goib is Mishi Brino Hart, Fatugo Fela Nasauna. Hello, everyone. I am Brino Hart, and you're all very welcome to the Sound Festival. Um, I'm a local teacher in the Portland area, uh, teaching at Portland Community College and for an organization based in DC and Galway called Let's Learn Irish. So if you're interested in online learning or long distance learning, um, check out either program. Um, they're offered at various hours and for um, various durations. Um, feel free to also email me directly if you have any questions concerning um, enrollment or information on when the next series of classes start. So today uh, I'm bringing you a lesson for absolute beginners. So if you've never had Irish before, if you've had very, very little, this lesson is for you. In particular, I want to focus on just speaking the language, but I will present some of the written um, some, some of the written language as well. I just want you to have a good time, not be too concerned about learning all of the rules of pronunciation, all the rules of grammar um, in this short, probably 20 minute lesson. Um, instead, keep your ears open, uh, draw some conclusions and comparisons with your eyes, and hopefully at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to walk away um, being able to say hello, how are you, and goodbye. And that is a 20 minute lesson well spent. So I've created a document for you to share, um, and I want you guys to follow along with me. I'm just going to share it with you now on screen. Here we are. So this particular lesson is focused around a conversation, and this conversation is in this first box up here. And you'll notice that to the left, we have in bolded letters, those, that's speaker um, one, and that's Brian. And the letters to the right, the sentences to the right that are in italics, that's speaker two, Sheila. So we're having a general conversation that you would likely in encounter any old time, um, meeting someone new on the street or say at an event. So we're going to work on that, and then below I have some points to take into consideration to help us with, with, with some rules and concepts of the language. There are a lot of interesting, fascinating new rules that govern the language very differently than some of the rules that govern English. So let's start first with me reading through this dialogue, and you can follow along. I'm just going to highlight this all so you can... There you go. So here we go. Jidich is mishibirian. Ke hosa. Oh, ji is murugut is mishashila. Konus tato hila. Tame goma evidian agus to hien. Tame goma goromagat. Is mashan. Is a salem me. Ke as hu. Is as portland misha akis malum salem. Misha freshen. Is jazz kosalat. Slan. Is jazz kosalat hien. Slan go foil. So in this particular lesson, we start out with a general greeting, right? Gia ditch and gia smuda ditch. Let's focus on this first greeting. Gia ditch. Repeat after me. Gia ditch. Gia ditch. You'll notice that first D sound is a J. Gia. The last. D sound, D is our normal D, ditch, gia ditch. The response to that is gius mura ditch, gius mura ditch, gius mura ditch. Those two salutations mean God with you and God and Mary with you or to you. And I Ireland being a traditionally Catholic nation, it's of no surprise that salutations would in include um, God and Mary. There are other secular forms of it. If we look down here, hi, that's just a transliteration of our normal hi in English, H-I. And then hello, being transliterated into a Gaelic spelling, H-A-L-O-F-A-D-A, hello, hello. You can use these as well as Giaditch and Giasmuraditch. So I'm going to say Giaditch. I want you to practice saying Giasmuraditch back. Giaditch. Gius Muraditch. Gia ditch. Gius Muraditch. Good job. Now, following that is a basic 
greeting, um, the following that basic greeting is an introduction. Is Misha Brian. I am Brian. Is Misha Brian. Notice Misha, that's the first person pronoun. Myself. Is Misha Brian. I myself am Brian. And the question that follows, rather naturally, Ke Hossa. Who are you? Ke Hossa. The speaker's reply is Ismisha Sheila. Ismisha Sheila. So I'm going to introduce myself saying Ismisha Brian, Ke Hossa, and I want you to respond Ismisha and then insert your name. Ismisha Brian, Ke Hossa. Ismisha Brian, Ke Hossa. Good job. So once again, these two sentences are actually this exchange here is Gidich is Mishabrian Ke Hossa. And the response, a reply, Gis Muradich is Misha Sheila. Let's move on to the second line here. Konas Tatu. Konas Tatu. How are you? Konas Tatu Ahila. Now you'll notice up here we respond, or the names are given Bizian and Sheila, but here they become Ahila. Any guess as to why that is? Well, in these previous sentences, we stated our own names. But in the second sentence, speaker one, Brian, is calling to Sheila by name. So in Irish, we have what's known as the vocative case. We change the name of the person on whom we're speaking as we call to them. And we keep their name normal in the nominative case up here when we're referencing those people within a sentence. So if I wanted to say, um, uh, I am I am Brian, I'd say, is Misha Brian, right? But if I wanted to get Brian's attention from across the room, I'd say, a Brian, a Brian. That's the vocative case. And you'll notice in both instances what has changed is an introduction of this little particle, a, uh, and then the introduction of an h after the original consonant. So Sheila becomes Hila, a uh, Hila. Vidian becomes Vrian, a uh, Vrian. So that's the vocative case in Irish. So, konostatu ahila, how are you, Sheila? Tame goma, evrian. Tame, I am, right? Tame goma, I am well, evrian. Agus tu fein, and you fein yourself. Agus tu fein. Agus tu fein. So, let's practice. I want you to practice asking, or not asking the question, but answering this question, konus tatu. I want you to respond with the simple tame goma evidian. And we'll keep bidian in there because that's my name. It's Misha Bidian. So konus tatu. Tame goma evidian. Konus tatu. Tame goma evidian. Great. And the little tag here at the end, Agus tu fein, is to return the question. Agus tu fein. And you yourself? Brian, Brian responds, Ta me goma. I am well, just like Sheila said, Ta me goma. Gurumagat. Gurumagat is one of our niceties. It's thank you. Gurumagat. 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 You'll notice in spoken Irish, parts of speech are alighted, right? And so they're absorbed into other bodies or they're just dismissed altogether. We do this all the time in English. So it's nothing new, but it's a frustration uh, when reading versus listening to a speaker, right? So Gurumagat or Gurumagat becomes Gurumad or Gurumagat. So, Tame Goma, Gurumagat. 
And Sheila's response to that is, good, ismashen, ismashen, which makes its way actually into um, some of the English spoken in Britain and Ireland as smashing, right? Oh, smashing. Not sure if any of you have heard that before, but it derives from ismashen, smashen, smashing. Following that up is another statement. Is as Salem me. Is as Salem me. I am from Salem. Is as Salem me. And of course, the natural question that follows that. Que as who? Que as who? You'll notice in Irish, th 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 doesn't exist as th as it does in English. It exists as h. So que as who? Que as who? Where from are you? Right? Isas Salem me, chaos who? Sheila responds, Isas Portland Misha. I am from Portland. Ach is Malum Salem. But I like Salem. Is Malum Salem. So this is the second introduction of the word ma, right? Which means good or well. When it's used as adjective like this, goma, ta me goma, it means I am well or I am good. This particular construction is idiomatic. Is ma yum basically translates to it is good or it is well with me. To mean I like. So is ma yum Salem. I like Salem. Is ma yum Salem. So is a Salem me chaos who I want you to practice by saying is as and then in, insert the city or the town that you're in, followed by Misha. Okay? So, is a Salem me? Ke as hu? Is a Salem me? Ke as hu? Good job. Good job, guys. Last line. Misha freshen, which is to mean, Sheila says, is malum Salem, and Bidian, naturally having pride in Salem, says, Misha freshen. Me too. Misha freshen. You'll notice that the Misha is the emphatic. We have may, we re, we've come across may to mean I. Misha kind of means I myself, right? It gives more emphasis. So Misha freshen just gives more emphasis. It's emphatic. Misha freshen. And then Brian maybe looks down at his watch and realizes he needs to be on his way. So he says, Is das kasalet? It's nice meeting with you. Slan. Is das kasalet? Slan. Sheila's response, Is das kasalet? Fain. Right? To mean yourself. It's nice meeting with you yourself. And then, Slan gofol. Slan go forward. So slan is our generic goodbye. And it's based off the word slante. If you've ever been to a pub, you might have seen that word written somewhere on the wall of the pub, or you might have heard it when people are cheering each other, right? When they're clinking their drinks before they swig down a pint. They say slante. Slante. Well, the word slan is based off the word slante to mean just a well wish for your health as you depart. Slan. Sheila uses slan, but she tags on gofoel, which means for now. Slan gofoel. So I'm going to practice saying slan, and you can say slan gofoel. Slan. Slan gofoel. Slan. Slan gofoel. Good job. I'm going to read this conversation again. And I want you to piece together the meanings that we discussed before. Don't be stressed to get it all right, but see which pops out in terms of your, your ear, what you can pick up, and your memory of what they mean. And maybe follow along and repeat. Giaditch is Mishibidian. Kehosa. Gias Muditich is Mishishila. Kunastatuahila. Tamekoma Evdian Agustuhian. Is a Salem me? Keaso? 
is as portlan misha akis malium salem. Misha freshen is jazz kosalet slan is jazz kosalet hien slan gofoil. Great. Let's take some time away from this conversation and discuss some pronunciation. See if I can highlight all of this. Irish is a very interesting and unique language, and its phonology or its system of sound production is also very interesting because it sounds very different than English. One of the reasons why that is, is that its vowel center is shifted from English. English went through a vowel shift itself. So instead of um, maintaining the vowel, the vowel values as all Indo-Europeans do with a, e, e, o, u, English says a, e, i, o, u, a, e, i, o, u. Most other European languages pronounce these series of vowels as a, e, e, o, u. So our English language and our pronunciation of the language works against us in trying to pronounce Irish more effectively and efficiently. So we need to think of, if you've learned another European language, think of a, e, e, o, u. A, e, e, o, u. These constitute our short vowels. And then with regards to these vowels, you'll notice that there's a diacritic mark over them. It's called the shinya fada. And what it does is it lengthens the sound of the vowel. This makes it more rich, the sound of that vowel more rich, but it also lengthens it in terms of timing. So a, e, e, o, u becomes a, a, e, o, u. A, a, e, o, u. Let's compare and contrast the two A sounds, the short then the followed by the long. A, a. E, a, e, e, o, o, u, u. Great. Now we take our short vowels and we divide them in Irish into two groupings are back or broad vowels, a, o, u, which are generated and created in the back of the throat, and our front vowels, i and e, which are created there in the front of our mouth. We call those slender vowels. So a, o, u, back, i, e, front. Now, those make a distinction in how we pronounce any one consonant. So for any one consonant sound, we have two possible pronunciations, a back version of that sound and a front version, often referred to as broad or slender. A good example of that, let's look at the D, if you remember our first salutation in this conversation, gia ditch. That D in ditch is very much like our English D, d, d. But if we contrast that with the D in Dia, we'll see that that sound is not the same. They're not similar. Ditch, but Gia. You'll notice that J sound is a front or slender D sound. And the reason that is, is because D is immediately followed by I. So the rule is a consonant the pronunciation of any one consonant will be broad or slender based on which vowel flanks either side of the consonant. We won't go into full detail here, but hopefully it gives you some idea of why the D in Gia is different from the D in Thich, right? I immediately follows the D, gives it a front sound. Z, U, which is a back vowel, immediately follows the D in the second word, so it's a back D sound. D, 
d d front sound d back sound d d ditch another example is the letter s right at the end of conis which is our word for how conis you'll notice that the letter pre precedes it is a which is also a back vowel sound conis conis let's contract contrast that with the word misha misha you'll notice on either side it's flanked by slender vowels i and e so as a slender sound or a front sound it's soft s misha misha when it's flanked on either side by a back vowel it's hard conis conis misha conis misha is our back sound, sh is our front sound. Last but not least, let's look at our differences in T sounds. Once again, in that first salutation, g a ditch, you'll notice that that last T sound is not t, t, as in the pronoun tu, which means you, t, t, tu, but it's a ch sound, ditch, ditch, because it is being controlled or augmented by the I that precedes it. So, ditch, ch, ch, is our front sound. T, t, as in tu, is our back sound. So those are just some examples of how the vowel system really affects how we pronounce consonants. Let's move on. In this line of words here, I'm just showing you how we move from a nominative sound, uh, a nominative version of a person's name like Sheila, and how it changes to be put into the vocative. This is just for your reference. We discussed it earlier in the conversation above. Sheila becomes Ahila, Vidian becomes Avian. And here are versions of those names being used with more secularized versions of, of our salutations, our greetings. Hi, Ahila, and hello, Evidian. Now, I'd like to just augment some of the questions we were asked above. Konis tatu is how are you, right? So konis is our how word, konis tatu. We can easily replace that final word, the pronoun, with a proper name. Konis Sheila. How is Sheila? Ta Sheila Goma. Sheila is well. Konasa Ta Bidian. How is Bidian? Ta Bidian Goma. Bidian is well. K is our question who. And in our conversation up here, K Hussa was asked after Brian introduced himself. K Hussa. The response is Misha Bidian. I'm Brian. Or is Misha Sheila. We can take the verb, which you'll notice in the Irish language comes first, the beginning of any statement, right? Ta is the verb, is is the verb, ta immediately follows the question verb here, or the question particle here. So, is is the verb, is misha brian. So, in order to negate that, to say, I am not brian, we would use the negated particle ni. So, ni misha brian, I'm not brian. Or as is written here, ni misha sheila. So, if I asked you, on husa sheila, you'd say, ni misha, ni misha sheila unless your name actually was Sheila. Last of the questions is K as. Now K by itself we understand means who, but with the preposition as, which means out of or from, K as kind of means where are you from. K as has some deeper connections to the way that life was experienced before the car and before motorways, right? Ireland in particular was not very transient. Um, it was difficult to get around from, from town to town or to get from point A to point B without passing through all the towns between those two points. 
So the idea was that people stuck close to home. So the question of chaos really means from whom do you come? And relationships, uh, in relation to relationships within a, any given town or parish, right? But nowadays it's understood and translated as from where? So chaos who, from where do you come? Is as Salem may. I'm from Salem. Or a negation of that, ni as Salem may. I'm not from Salem. Ni as Salem may. So in this conversation, we've come across two verbs, be and is. These are the smallest the, ver the verbs can go. We call them the root. They're both forms of the verb be, to be. Be is more commonly used, or more often used. I shouldn't say more commonly used, it's more often used to describe everyday patterns and occurrences, things that change based on time, um, emotion, uh, whim, circumstances. Whereas is means to be, but it's utilized in one of four circumstances to describe who you are, what you are, what something is, and to create an idiomatic expression like is malum Salem, I like Salem. In the Irish language, we don't conjugate verbs based on the person that's doing the verbs. We conjugate verbs based on their positive quality, their negative quality, or their question quality. So you see here, B, I'm conjugating it into the present tense, and we're moving from positive to negative to question forms here. So repeat after me. Ta, ta me goma, nil, nil me goma, a will, a will to goma, and nach will, nach will to goma. So I am well, ta me goma. Neil me goma, I am not well. A will to goma, are you well? Nach will to goma, aren't you well? Our yes response would be ta, and our no response would be neil. Irish, because it's verb initial, has no one word to mean yes or no. We have to reference the verb either in a positive context or in a negative context to mean our yes or no. Fascinating, right? Let's look at the copular verb. This verb is broken. It doesn't function in all tenses, only present tense and past tense. And in that way, it also is broken in that it can't, it doesn't, it doesn't have a meaning. It doesn't stand alone to have any one meaning. It has to be tied in with another adjective or noun to give it meaning. So in the case of is malum, You'll notice that the verb is is being followed by the adjective ma, right, to mean I like. So is malum Salem, ni malum Salem, on malet Salem, nach malet Salem. The response the positive response would be isma. That would be our yes, isma. Nima would be our no, nima. Now you'll notice in the question there, I moved between lum and let in place of me and tu. These are prepositional pronouns. They are too much to focus on in one given lesson. You've learned quite enough today. So I appreciate your time and thank uh, the Samhain Celtic New Year Festival for inviting me to offer you guys a free lesson. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of uh, the festival and have a great Samhain and happy Celtic New Year. Slán go forward.